Hello, Peter Wood here from Greenwood Days, back in the garden, trying to show you a few different aspects of green woodwork. Today I'm going to try and concentrate on cleaving the wood. That means starting with a larger log and splitting it down once, twice, three times to get it to the size that's right for you to turn or to work with the draw knife. We're just going to concentrate on cleaving today. Um, on another film I'll do some axe work and draw knife and onwards from there. Um, a few things to consider, the tools you want to use. We've got a couple of mallets, a small one for the smaller bits. Again, just a small little branch that's got a handle carved on. And then a slightly bigger mallet. I'll show you how to use that safely, um, but that's quite useful. Um, just getting the first split started. Um, we want to use an axe. Um, we're looking just at a simple axe, a nice wedge shape. Something that comes down that when you put it into the split that you're starting, it keeps on um, opening up that split. Um, you can get other patterns of axes. This one's much more of a felling pattern. It sort of almost goes straight up. You'll get the split started there, but once it gets to here, it will just keep going in and won't open up the split. So that's less good for cleaving. Um, you could use the more traditional fro, F-R-O-E, that's a fro, something for levering open. And I will use that sometimes, but I tend to use the axes rather than the fro. You don't need the fro, to be honest. Um, it is useful at times, especially when cleaving long things, but at the moment we're, we're not going to concentrate on that. Um, and to cleave, you're going to be let's see, using the axe, putting it onto the wood, and then knocking it with the hammer. Uh, you're not trying to throw the axe in and split it. You want accuracy where you're going to split it. Um, so I'm going to split this in half. And let's, let's, have, let's have a look at this bit I've prepared here. Um, we've got a piece of wood. This is a slice that's just taken off from the top of the bit that I'm going to cleave and it shows you the different ways that we're going to cleave. The first thing we're going to do is cleave in half radially from the pith in the middle straight out to the edge. Um, tangentially it will be that way along the grain, radially across. Um, and you want to split it in half so you've got equal mass on both sides. If you have uneven mass then the split will run down and run off and you'll lose some of the wood. So ideally split it in half and then the next thing you want to do, let's, let's cover that up, is split it in quarters. So from the pith back out again into the quarters and then we, then we can start thinking about what size piece of wood we want um, for example if we wanted quite a large billet we could then split that quarter into half which is nice and easy because you've got equal masses on both sides and then you'll have something that's about the size that you want if you wanted something a bit smaller um, splitting it in half you can still do that but you'll have lots of work to do so it's better to cleave it into thirds so we'll take one third out and then cleave this bit in half and then you've got enough room for the smaller billet. Um, you could then cleave it tangentially and then you'll be left with a piece of wood that's almost the size that you want. And that's more efficient but also gives you more material as well. Um, if you wanted that size and you cleaved it in half, you've got lots of work to do and then you waste a lot of wood as well. So um, better to be efficient in what you're doing. Let's have a look at stance. Um, I've got the piece of wood on another block of wood. If you put it straight onto the ground, when you hit with the mallet, the force is dissipated by the ground, so it's less effective. If it's on a bit of concrete, if it's on a nice block of wood, then the force is more effective and you have to use less energy. Um, Next thing, I'm going to place the piece of wood um, not quite in the middle. Let's, have, let's, let's show you from here. So I'm going to place the axe here. So it's not going across the pith in the middle, but it's going to start splitting and hopefully that will run across there. Okay. Now notice, I'm going to stand and put the axe here, but at the moment the axe is aiming for me. So safety wise, I'm going to move to one side and I'm going to stand perpendicular to the axe. That's a bit easier to hit than if I'm trying to hit it that way. And also, if this suddenly, suddenly splits open, it will fly off that way and then I'm not going to get hit either. Um, I'm going to use the big mallet with this. 
um, and a tip with using the big mallet don't just try and lift it up and hold it there because that's very tiring and when, you, when you're tired you make mistakes so all I'm going to do is using the weight of it is flick it up and then let it drop down oops there we go keep hold of it though I'm going to flick it up and then let it drop down so I'm going to put the axe and place the axe where I want the split to be flick it up and give it a bit of a whack and that's solid in there now give it a bit more of a whack a bit more of a whack now this is a bigger piece of wood than you really need to use so it's a bit more of an effort but you can see let's turn it around a split between it beginning to go down and that's what we want if you wanted I could use two axes come around this way put the second axe in there that might help but really one axe most of the time will do and that's almost split I can't hit that axe anymore so this is where you can use the throw just put it in and leave it open you could do that with the axe you can leave it open it's not a good thing to do really because that's the weak point on your axe head or your axe handle and if you continue in levering like that then um, you're going to break it there you could tip it over on its edge and pop the axe into the split there and knock it open but to be honest I can hear and feel this is just about to split open so let's just lever it open and there we go great thing about this piece of wood I don't know if you can see that there let's bring it a bit closer it's really quickly grown so you've got really wide growth rings but it's nice and straight or relatively straight and not any knots in there let's put it back on there so I'm going to split it in um, two quarters so I'm going to go straight across and again using the mallet It up, let it drop down. One more time, lift it up. And you see how that axe flew out there? That's what I'm saying. If you're standing here and you whack it, it's going to go straight into your shins and cause you an injury. So be careful. That will come across. And notice with this cleaving, with the splitting, it's going straight down the grain. That's keeping the strength of the wood. I'm going to split this into thirds now. So I'm going to probably turn this into something like a rolling pin in the end. So let's put it a third, give it another whack, it's cleaving nicely, move that out of the way, and then I'm going to split it tangentially. I'll probably use the smaller mallet, just a bit easier. You don't want to keep on using that because it's very tiring and as you get tired you lose accuracy. So I'm going to go on there and give it a bit of a whack and that's splitting straight down the grain but do you notice just at the end the split is beginning to run off that's where you've got a smaller mass and a larger mass you could turn it over and split again from this side and then they'll join up and there we have it ready to start axing and that's going to be a good substantial rolling pin in the end I'll do that again just to demonstrate let's split that I'm going to split this down that way this time tangentially to start off with you can see it just beginning to run off so I'm going to turn it over and split down back down this way in half and then we can split it in half again let's stand there and if you wanted smaller things you can keep on splitting it in half and in quarters but that's good enough for me so out of that quarter we've got some billets ready to start shaping um, we could cleave that a bit further down and carry on working it but to be honest I think that's going to get sawn up, put on the firewood pile and that will make me a cup of tea out in the woods when we're back in the woods. 
next lesson is going to be axing this to a cylinder. So I'll see you then.